Taking drugs is bad, kids. And here is a game that shoves that point down your throat, screams in your face, tears your soul out and burns it to the ground. This is Of Bird and Cage. Hey guys and welcome to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer. And today we are melting eyeballs in my review of Of Bird and Cage from Capricia Productions and published by All In Games. But before we stage dive into it, I make purely adventure game videos, so come and join me for more by smashing the like, hitting subscribe and tapping the bell. Rock on! Of Bird and Cage centres around a young woman named Gitta, who pretty much from the start isn't being dealt the best cards in life. A playable prologue introduces us to her abusive father when she's only a toddler, watching helplessly as he throws her mother around. We then skip forward 20 years or so to see that her early struggles have carried on into adulthood. Gitta enters a pretty rough looking bar in the hope of playing a song or two at the open mic, only to be left bereft that it's all over already and the locals are none too friendly. On top of all this, she's addicted to the designer drug GSVFGDP, I don't know what it's called, it's a designer drug. So this trip to the bar is really just an excuse to get high. From here, the story takes a turn into even more darker territory, which includes kidnapping, domestic violence, more drug taking and, well, more violence. It's very thinly based on Beauty and the Beast, but yeah, very thinly. It's also all accompanied by a huge metal soundtrack featuring legends of rock such as X Guns N' Roses' Ron Bumblefoot Thal, Rob van der Loo, Rude Jolie and many, many more. But maybe I should say the soundtrack is accompanied by the game, because really that's what Of Bird and Cage is. It's mostly a vehicle to demonstrate the tunes. But this is a gaming review, so let's take it as a game to start. Gitter, she has no weight about her in both physicality and also character. Growing up in such traumatic circumstances has left her broken and, um, well, caged like a bird, I guess. The other guys we meet are all thugs. Even the anti-hero of the piece is a meat grinder who uses Gitter as a punching bag. Gitter's addiction to the designer drug plays its part throughout. Once the effects of the drug start to fade, so does our grasp on reality. The walls start to turn to fire and the world becomes blurry with odd shapes here and there. We have to get another hit to make it all disappear. As Gitter, we do have choices to make and this is one of only a small handful of actual gameplay here. Depending on what choices we make, Gitter's actions can range from sympathetic to downright murderous. Gitter grows in the game depending on which of these choices we make. I mentioned that she is used as a punching bag and this goes for pretty much every guy she comes across. We get to fight back here by button bashing and crossing our fingers we hit somebody. Nine times out of ten I barely landed a punch and the story moved on with me weeping on the floor. I've always said I'm a useless gamer in terms of FPS, platforms, fighting, basically anything that isn't poison click but I did replay several parts of the fighting bits and always just got pummeled. The rest of the controls are also slightly clumsy. I wasn't using a gamepad and I think that it would help a lot more but the standard WASD keys plus mouse to move is a port of call here. Sometimes I wanted to turn the mouse but it wouldn't let me until I let go of the direction I was walking in which was annoying but I'm sure this is something that will get sorted in a future patch. So apart from fighting and taking drugs, the rest of the gameplay is mainly made up of quick time events from pressing certain keys in a certain way for five seconds to open a lock for example, through to walking in one direction chasing a bird. Yeah, there's minimal actual gameplay here. And to heap more caution on top, the entire game is timed. Taking out the opening bit at the bar where you can waltz around at your own pace and discover things as you go, right from the moment you leave, the soundtrack times you. The soundtrack plays out like a musical, telling the story of what we see on screen. Again, 
Each song is a finite amount of time and this has to match what's going on on screen. So I could stand still and do nothing for four and a half minutes, let's say, waiting for the song to play out. Or I could attempt to get out of the room or barricade the door, whatever the game wants me to do. But after the song finishes, that is end scene, regardless what you're doing. It's added in there as a sense of tension, but all it did for me was add loads of frustration, especially as the character of Gitta, from her first person point of view, often gets stuck behind doors and boxes and even other characters and basically anything that's in the environment. It's split into different chapters, so after one is finished, you can then just go and try it again if you like, and I did. I even tried one four or five times and still had no idea exactly what the objective was. But let's take a look at it from the view of a metal musical. The music on offer from these legends is really strong stuff, and the production is superb. This is my girl and she belongs to me, 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 me. and you just run along. The same can't be said for the visuals. They've gone for a look similar to Life is Strange or the Quantic Dream games, but they haven't reached it. There are a few cutscenes where the songs playing are sung by the characters on screen, but the lip sync is out and I didn't actually realise they were singing to each other until my second playthrough of it. The story is ambiguous, the graphics are okay and the gameplay includes way too many random fights and not enough actual puzzle solving. If Of Bird and Cage took away the timer throughout, it lift my experience of the game significantly. But when I only have a few minutes to rummage around through a dark house, possibly looking for something that I think I may need, it drags it all down enormously. But I guess then it wouldn't work as a metal album because the timed element of the songs wouldn't match the visuals and you know what, it's six of one and half a dozen of another. But after all of that, it also made me really not like any of the characters even Gitter. I played several parts twice, taking different options to see where it took me, and it, it did change things quite a lot, with the game having four known endings. But even with this added replayability, the story is frankly silly, and I didn't care for anyone involved. If you're a fan of metal, then I think the soundtrack alone will be right up your alley, and you should pick the game up to experience these heroes guiding Gitter through this two-hour metal musical. For everyone else, approach with caution. Thank you for watching my review of Of Bird and Cage. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more, and be sure to like the video too. Be sure to come and find me at my adventure game Facebook page, The Point and Click Adventurers. I'll leave a link down below in the description. I'll also leave a link down below where you can go and pick up a copy of the game. Until next time, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is you're doing right now, and take care.